Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about a company called OpSWAT and uh, one of their really cool security products uh, that's called Meta Defender. Um, they're, a, uh, they're a partner, OpSWAT's a partner with F5, and they do a great job of keeping web applications safe. And specifically today, we're going to talk about how they, uh, they look at files that would be uploaded from a client to a back-end web server uh, and the process that they go through and the sophistication uh, that they engage in to, to make sure that they search those files and, uh, and keep any kind of bad stuff out of those before they ever have a chance to access your web applications or, or your back-end web servers. So just to give you kind of a quick picture overview here, let's say you have a bunch of clients out in the internet. So I'll just put, you know, client, um, maybe, you know, you got, a, you got a whole bunch of clients that want to access your web application. And so I'll put, uh, I'll put, you know, web app over here. Um, and specifically, let's say you have, you know, let's say you have multiple web servers uh, that, you know, that deliver your web application. Um, and specifically for this particular example that we'll go over today, uh, you, you have a file upload capability uh, that, you're, that you allow clients to upload maybe pictures or videos or music or, you know, whatever it is. And, and man, there's so many of those different web applications out there that allow this file upload capability. Uh, so I'm just going to put, I'm going to put file upload here uh, in terms of the, the capability of what this, this setup allows. All right, well, of course, uh, being an F5 customer, what are you going to put in between your clients and your web application? You're going to put a big IP because um, that is what we do. And specifically these clients, as they access your web application, they're actually going to access your big IP, the virtual server that, uh, you know, that allows access back to the web application, and then the big IP is going to interact directly with the backend uh, web servers. All right, in this specific scenario, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put reverse proxy here. So reverse proxy, this is the, a reverse proxy, uh, you know, setup so that uh, every, everything coming back into the web applications uh, come, you know, from the big IP. Um, you could flip this thing on its head as well and uh, use this in a, you know, from a maybe an internal network perspective, uh, internal clients going out to access things on the internet. Uh, but nonetheless, in this specific example, in a reverse proxy situation with a big IP, um, and I'm going to say we've got LTM uh, provisioned here on the big IP, um, we are going to interact with this, uh, this, this product called Meta Defender that OpSWAT, uh, you know, that OpSWAT offers. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Meta Defender down here, Meta Defender. And Meta Defender is, uh, is a really cool product that essentially um, scans files that you would upload to your back-end web application and it does a lot of really cool things as it scans those. But the, but the basic idea is that if you have a client who is going to upload a file to your web application, we want to let Meta Defender take a look at that and make sure that any kind of active content, any kind of virus, any of that stuff is removed uh, from that file before it is allowed access to the web application. Uh, the way specifically that Meta Defender interacts with a big IP is through a, uh, a protocol called, and I'll just put it right here, ICAP. That is the uh, Internet Content Adaptation Protocol. So it's, an I, it's the I, ICAP protocol that interacts between the LTM and the, and this, uh, and the Meta Defender. And Meta Defender, by the way, could have multiple, um, you know, uh, so you could have multiple Meta Defender, ser Meta Defender, Meta Defender servers, uh, you know, to, to give yourself like a, a high availability, a redundant, you know, setup here on, on this end as well. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the overall flow is client wants to access web application, wants to upload a file to that web application. So as the HTTP request comes into the big IP, the, uh, the LTM is going to, of course, you know, uh, get that first, uh, do whatever you need to do. So if you need to do I rules or, you know, whatever you need to do on the, on the LTM big IP side, <clears throat> you can certainly do it. But before, before the LTM hands it off to the back-end web servers, it's going to, via this ICAP protocol, hand off to the Meta Defender uh, service. Meta Defender is going to scan the file, make sure that there's nothing wrong with it, and then once it has done its job, it's going to send back the response to, uh, back to the LTM, which will then forward uh, the request onto the web application, 
and the file either gets uploaded or not, or maybe part of the file gets uploaded. And I'll get to that in just a second. So uh, a few things that Meta Defender can do um, is I, I mentioned that it that it can uh, you know view these files or it can scan these files. So they have a scan engine, and in fact they have multiple scan engines. So I'll put scan engine here. Uh, as of the publication of this video, at least, uh, they have 30 plus scan engines uh, that they can that they can utilize to scan any any one given file. Uh, you guys have probably seen an example of, you know, you may have a file that's uh, that's infected with a virus, let's just say, and you send it through one antivirus scan engine. Maybe this particular scan engine finds the virus, and then maybe if you send it through a totally different antivirus scan engine, it would not find the virus. So the idea is that with the capability of Meta Defender having over 30 different scan engines available in its inventory, um, then you can scan, you can, you can utilize up to, you know, the, the max number that they have available, which again is over 30 right now. Um, you don't have to use all those, but, uh, but you could, you could see the, uh, you know, the power of this, that if you just use one scan engine, it may or may not catch a virus or, a, or active content or whatever it would be. Uh, when you start to allow multiple scan engines for multiple different, you know, um, fields to uh, to scan this content, then it's probably there's a really good chance that if anything is found, uh, you know, malicious in this file, then then it's going to catch it right here. So they have all these different scan engines. Uh, the one of the one of the really cool things that they have available as well is what I'll call a uh, data sanitization. Data san sanitization capability. So imagine, imagine you have a, uh, like a PDF file, for example, and it has active content in it. Um, and the client wants to upload that active content PDF file to your web application. Then what the Meta Defender data sanitization feature can do is it can actually detect the active content portion of that file and it will remove just the active content portion and then it will uh, upload the remainder of the file to the web application. So, uh, so in this case, let's say you have a PDF file, it's got the active content maybe at the top or what, it doesn't matter where it is, uh, but then it's got other text and graphics and whatever that are not active, that are still safe. It will remove the active part, it will keep everything else, and then that way the user on the back end that would need to, to access this file upload can still see everything that is part of that file that was not, uh, that was not malicious or, or harmful. Um, one term that I wanted to throw out here with the data sanitization is, um, is what I'll, what I'll uh, call CDR. And what that stands for is content, disarm, and reconstruction. That's kind of an industry term. Gartner uses it and others. Uh, but that's the idea here of data sanitization. The content, disarm, and then reconstruct. And it's exactly what I just said. That we're going to take the content, we're going to disarm the bad stuff, all the active malicious stuff, and then we're going to reconstruct the file in a safe way and send the safe part back to the web application in the back end. So, uh, so really cool stuff that it does here. There's also kind of in the context of this, uh, what I'll call zero day, zero day uh, capabilities in the sense that, you know, if you remember back here to the scan engines, you've got scan engines that are gonna use um, signature files that are updated constantly, by the way. Um, but in the, in the context of a signature, that inherently means that you know that there's a problem with a certain virus or a certain piece of content or whatever that, uh, that you can match a malicious part of a file with a known signature. Um, the, uh, the zero day in the data sanitization, and one of the cool things about Meta Defender is even if there's not an active known uh, scan engine uh, you know, signature to match against, it can still find things like uh, maybe there's some kind of VBA or JavaScript or, or active content uh, that, again, even, even though it doesn't match an, a known signature, we can still know that, hey, this has active content in it, and so we're going to remove that. Um, you know, and so I'll, in, in the context of that, I'll, I'll just say that you know, a zero-day type capability exists here uh, to still keep your files, or essentially keep your web application safe from what would be malicious file content. So, uh, so we have that as well. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the things um, that, that you can do in terms of setting up the Big IP LTM with the Meta Defender is as you go into configure Big IP, you're going to need to do things like um, establish an ICAP uh, profile. So I'll write that up here. Um, 
you'll need to, you know, create virtu virtual servers and, uh, you know, pools and monitors and all kinds of stuff, you know, that it would take just that, you know, that, that fundamental uh, infrastructure, if you will, that fundamental configuration uh, to be able to talk from the Big IP back to the Meta Defender servers um, and back, you know, and back again. So you can certainly do all that stuff manually, um, and depending on the complexity of the, uh, you know, of this of this setup, uh, it may be a pretty quick thing, but it may get pretty complex, um, you know, depending on how crazy all this stuff, you know, gets, how many of these you have to set up, and all the rest. Uh, so the cool thing I want to point out right here is there is an iApp that was created um, that does all this stuff for you. And if you know anything about iApps, this is the automated um, feature of the Big IP that just allows you to answer a few quick questions. And in fact, specifically for this iApp, you essentially give the uh, IP address, uh, you do a couple of IP address inputs uh, between you know, Big, uh, uh, Big IP LTM and then Meta Defender uh, servers. And then the IAP builds out the rest of it. So the the uh, you know the virtual servers, the monitors, the pools, the nodes, all that different stuff is automatically created for you. You answer a couple of very basic questions. The IAP builds it all for you. So that's a that's a really powerful tool as well when you're talking about um, you know the the configuration setup to to build all this stuff out. So uh, so again, Meta Defender is a very powerful tool uh, with respect to traffic flow into your web applications. And like I said uh, before, you can flip this thing on its head. And if you are more concerned about internal clients uh, sending files out to the internet, you can also have this same setup. I know the uh, you know I use this reverse reverse proxy uh, example today, but you can see that that this can be. Um, you know, established in, in multiple different scenarios. So, uh, so it does a great job of keeping web applications secure via what would be malicious file contents. Um, and so, uh, so hopefully you've learned a couple of things here with this Lightboard lesson. Uh, hey, if you like this thing, you can click right here on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.